No, not that! Electro. Yeah. I'm Electro! Power is another word that I used to describe you. Your mighty winds come in and blow me away! This living electrical capacitor carries a high voltage hate for New York's friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I can't even fight back. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of Maxwell Dillon, otherwise known as Electro. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. We have chosen to primarily follow the storyline that unfolded in 1964's Amazing Spider-Man number 9, and which was expanded upon in The Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 1. Maxwell Dillon was once a simple lineman, a technician that repaired electrical cables. However, all that changed when a freak lightning strike spurred a mutagenic change in his body. This transformed him into a living electrical capacitor, capable of generating high voltage blasts from his fingertips and giving him control of electrical devices. While impressive, his newfound powers were limited by the amount of energy he could build up and store. As a result, Max stole electrical equipment from Stark Industries. Incorporating the technology into a colorful costume, he used it to become the super criminal known as Electro. Under this identity, he committed daring capers, such as stealing gold from an armored truck. In response, the opportunistic J. Jonah Jameson, the editor-in-chief of the Daily Bugle, began a smear campaign that shamelessly accused Electro of being an alter ego of Spider-Man. 
Intent on proving the publisher wrong, Spider-Man faced Electro and was nearly killed in the process. This was due to being unable to touch the criminal without receiving a severe electric shock. Despite this, Spider-Man soon confronted Electro once again, this time wearing rubber gloves and footwear. Electro was finally defeated when Spider-Man blasted his new green and yellow clad nemesis with water from a fire hose. Embarrassed, the electricity-fueled villain sought out strength in numbers by joining the Sinister Six. As a full-fledged member, he worked alongside Dr. Octopus, Craven the Hunter, Sandman, Mysterio, and the Vulture to draw upon their respective talents until one of them was victorious. However, the group was defeated by Spider-Man's resourcefulness. Afterward, Electro took on solo efforts once again by devising a master plan to control New York City's power supply. However, he was stopped and decided to temporarily quit his criminal career. That is, until he joined the next incarnation of the Sinister Six, with Hobgoblin replacing the recently deceased Kraven the Hunter. Following this, the criminal underworld offered him an experimental procedure to greatly enhance his abilities in exchange for becoming their enforcer. More powerful than ever before, Electro soon rekindled his earlier plan of taking over the New York City power supply. However, Spider-Man defeated him through the creation of an insulated suit. Frustrated, the criminal supercharged himself and leaped into the Hudson River in an attempt to kill himself by generating a massive explosion. Thought dead, Electro eventually resurfaced and rejoined his old villainous comrades for countless more schemes against the city and its webbed protector. One of Spider-Man's most frequent and enduring adversaries, Electro has appeared in countless forms of media and is best known for fighting alongside the most powerful Spider-Man adversaries rather than taking on intricate plots of his own. Okay, Electro, I'll soften him up. He won't hurt you now. Very funny. Get lost before I seed your tail feathers. It was a boy raised by his overprotective mother, but of course he got electrical powers and stuff of that such, right? But there was actually a point where he wanted to become an electrical engineer. He actually did his job well until one day he was hit by a lightning bolt while working on a line. This lightning bolt turned Max into a living dynamo capable of charging, recharging himself with electricity. He became a criminal for fortune. His other ambition came to light again. He's one of those characters where he's surprisingly intelligent, but his low self-esteem holds him back. His own limitations is himself. I mean, since he's basically living electricity, he has a lot of blast power, right? It's pretty much self-explanatory. He can cut through a steel door vault with his blast power. He's fought characters like Daredevil, who's actually surprisingly quick more than you think. He dropped him on this occasion, KOing him. Can climb a building with his electricity, so he can use versatility. By using the power of the electric cables, which run up inside of the wall. Not to mention he can deactivate Mr. Fantastic's security system. He can drain others' electric abilities. He even states, absorbed, which makes me a lot more powerful. He blasts through an elevator door. Another case with Daredevil. He uses his electromagnetism to slide down the cable. Even blows open a wooden door. One can say he can control lightning and stuff, but he's not just lightning. He has electromagnetism, one could say. They're kind of both connected. He can kind of use this electromagnetism to draw himself to metal. His electric shield can block a lot of rubble, physical rubble. And, and if it's metal, it's definitely not getting past them. He turns people into stacks. Statues. He stated, well, I'm creating an electromagnetic storm around the invisible girl, carbonizing the air and imprisoning her within a sheath of rock hard electrocarbon atoms. Talking about being very versatile, Electro is. He made like an electric ramp he can like slide on, blocking bullets with this amped electricity ambient electricity basically one of his many occasions with spider-man he blasted spider-man with electricity through a car roof sending him flying showing his blast power he can also fling around metal by ionizing it it's kind of like some electromagnetism and during this fight with spider-man here he drops a truck by picking it up picking up cars with his electricity drop dropping trucks on spider-man one can say he has lifting power thanks to his electricity one can say his electricity allows him to be able to pick up heavy stuff or just have raw power not just electric power most of the time, water is a weakness, but sometimes he can make it a lethal to where if you're wet, he can electrocute the water and then you get fried even worse. In this occasion with good night webbing, he can just snip that webbing with blast power. He one shot at Black Cat on this occasion, knocking her out. He turned ice into steam with his blast power, letting you know how hot lightning can get as well. Yeah, one could say if you have lightning ability, you have basically heat manipulation because lightning is not necessarily cold he can drain power lines to get more power or to get fueled he can cause massive blackout makes a massive rikers prison break doing so lightning storm legitly messing up helicopters talk about blast power looks like a little force field right here as well in the case with the fantastic four he blasts the thing backwards right here scuffling with the fantastic four 
Not only did he block blast from the Human Torch with his lightning, see right there, even blasting the Human Torch. Blows apart concrete and melt metal instantly. He can surround you in a ring of electricity just kind of floating in the vicinity to where you're kind of trapped. He even stated, that's why they call me Electric. All the power of electricity is here. He can bring down extremely large walls with his blast power. Torching normal humans with his electricity is enough to kill him. His aura even made Spider-Man sleepy, so lets you know he, he can have like an electro aura around him. His body is quote unquote in electric shock condition. Obviously don't knock him to electric currents because it will revitalize him. Somehow touching metal bars did that. Touching a switch that has massive amounts of electricity running through it, he's immune to it because he's electro, obviously. Can turn on a TV with his electric ability. He can even fly on electric cables. He can kind of do some form of teleportation or one can say traveling inside the lightning or turning into the lightning itself or electricity. Even Spider-Man said, now he's on the other side of me thanks to him using lightning. His electrical field is what helps him be able to endure, endure punches from Spider-Man, shrugging off hits from Spider-Man thanks to his shielding. Here his electrical charge deflected my blow and his bolts are so powerful he can even accidentally take out characters like Vulture by accident friendly fire. This is like his way of flying, like using the lightning ramp, like slide on it. It's more implication here that his weakness is water, but it's not always his weakness. He can actually amp himself with prep time by supercharging himself to the point where water isn't necessarily end all be all type of thing when he's drained a lot of electricity he can get powerful enough to where he can kind of combat water he even vaporized the water and attacks the brain with his electricity he states i can superheat the air turning the water to steam getting new powers to disrupt the electrical impulses within your brain spider-man in this occasion so yeah he has potential to grow in power thanks to environmental amping and stuff like that like imagine if thor decided to charge up electro with a lightning you know what i'm saying when he's supercharged he can even bring down buildings with ease Thanks to him being supercharged, he can kind of do hexy stuff. Nate Gray is a psionic type of being, tries to go inside Electro's head, right? Nate Gray even says, I'm only going to add a few mental blocks to prevent you from assessing your powers. Electro literally says, sounds like a good plan. Too bad brainwaves are a form of electrical energy, and I'm the master of all electricity. Kind of getting the drop on even Nate Gray. He even states, yikes, Electro's even more powerful than I imagined. His energy cocoon is blasting him and Nate through this building's concrete foundation causing all of that destruction. It's also implied thanks to his electricity, he can block telepathic attacks because of how electricity circuits go through the brain and stuff. He kind of has resistance to mind destruction. Blast it, set a lady on fire, accidentally killed her with his blast power. He can even shave with his power. He somehow burns through a rubber glove. Even rubber is supposed to be resistant to electricity or immune. Blasting back Spider-Man afterward. He can fry folks to a skeletal level, having fun with his electricity like steel. He can use the electrical objects to travel inside of it. Like he has a physical form and a lightning form, basically. He blasted Sandman this one time. Thanks to, you know, how sand is the heat. Electricity is the heat. He can make Sandman into glass, technically. Can travel on any current, literally. Consistently blasting himself through Spider-Man's webbing as well. He's not afraid to use his speed like going into the Quinjet like this and then proceeds to blitzing fast characters like Hawkeye or even Spider-Woman who, who's a Spider-Man tier basically. Not to mention Hawkeye has reflexes in, in microseconds which is literally one millionth of a second yet this didn't stop Electro from blitzing him or a spider tier character with his raw speed. And no, this is not an outlier because comic characters react to microsecond stuff all the time. So Electro is able to go faster than they can react, showing his raw speed. But here he is powered up though, he even stay tier. The thing is, since my power up, I don't even need those other guys. I can take you all on by myself. He states, I'm lightning fast. Lightning can go up to speeds of 224,000 miles per hour. It should be worth noting that he takes down the Avenger Quinjet. He can rip open the road and send cars flying with this amount of output he can produce. By the way, when it comes to water, it's 